Good day. This is Browsby Wolf with my Minecraft Railroad tutorial series. Today, in episode number four, we're going to be talking about the first of many novelty railroad tracks that I plan to discuss in this series. And the first one is one of the easiest to make, and it is what I call the minecart drop. And what you'll see here, I have removed the track that we built in my test area in the last three episodes. Uh, that has all been removed. Instead, it's been replaced by this bizarre stone serpent that rises up out of the plain. The point of this is to create this inclined track that terminates in a precipice. Thus, any cart coming up this track will then be thrown off out into space. So let's go ahead and ride the cart and see how this behaves and how we can use this to make our railroad tracks fun and exciting. So get in the cart, hit the W, and we're off and running. Well, uh, that didn't work. It seems that we didn't have enough momentum to actually make it to the top of the incline. So what we're going to have to do is add a little bit of redstone. So what I'm going to do is take this opportunity, when we were talking about redstone track in episode one, we didn't discuss putting it on an incline. But if you recall in episode three, when we were talking about the construction of bridges and tunnels underground, laying track and incline is exactly like laying track on flat ground. And that is exactly true with a power rail as well. Notice all I did was add the power rail to the to the incline as if I were just laying it on the ground and the geographical feature itself or the incline tilted the track without any assistance from me. Now to power it I have to put a redstone torch next to it just like we saw earlier uh, the same way you would do on the ground with a piece of redstone track to get it powered up. All right now we got a little bit of extra power this will get us to the top of the incline hopefully Let's give it another try. There we go. And okay, that didn't work. For some reason, I'm still up here at the top. Uh, let me go ahead and exit the mine cart. Let's fly up in the air and turn around and take a look at what happened. If you notice, the mine cart appears to be stuck on the edge of the cliff. And this is part of the physics of the Minecraft world. If the back edge of the minecart does not clear the cliff that it's driving off of, it will instead just get stuck on the track. And this is frequently a problem that lots of railroad builders in Minecraft have when they try to use um, the minecart mine drop feature. So let's see. In order to get the minecart to clear the track, we have to have enough momentum here that we can launch it out into the space, in which case the rear of the cart, before it comes to a stop, will have cleared the cliff and will then drop using the gravity built into the Minecraft program. So to give us that extra bit of momentum, I'm going to add another piece of power rail here. Now notice something strange. When I added this power rail, I do not have a torch next to it, a redstone torch, and yet it is already powered up. And that is because the second rail that I added is taking power off the first rail. So the redstone torch is powering the first rail, then the first rail is powering the second rail. Now, if these two rails weren't touching, let's do this. Let's put a power rail here and a piece of regular rail here. Notice the second rail is not on. That's because it's not touching the first one. It has to be touching it. Let's put a regular rail right there. There we go. Now with the second rail that should give us enough velocity and momentum to carry us off the edge here so that we don't get stuck. Back in the cart. Off we go. Yes, and we fall off the edge. All right, there's our precipice above us. We're in the cart. Let's jump out of the cart, walk over here. 
and take a look at what we have. If you'll notice, if you'll notice the cart is directly in line with the railroad track that we just came up. And also that the cart is unbroken, it's not laid on its side, it's not tipped over, it seems to be in perfectly good shape. And even though I was sitting in it, I am undamaged. Now this is true for any height that you drop, even if I had taken this all the way up to the clouds and fallen down. In creative mode, no matter what distance you fall, you will hurt neither yourself nor the mine cart. Well, what I'm gonna do here, if you notice the cart is in line with the track here, I am going to lay some track here on the ground, get rid of the cart. So we'll just put some track here and let's ride it again and watch what happens when the cart lands on the piece of track. A little bit of coast there going on from our forward momentum. But the important thing to notice is the car landed here again, unscathed, undamaged, right side up on the track. And not only is it on the track, but it is functionally on the track. I can push it and it rolls. As we saw with the little bit of momentum that we had, it would actually, it was continuing to roll after we landed on the track. Now, the only thing we need now to propel the cart is we need a form of locomotion. Some railroad builders will put a piece of redstone here, so a piece of redstone rail or a power rail this way, and then utilize, and I'll probably have to put a second one there to that way if the track hits somewhere in the middle. If it has enough forward momentum, it will propel it forward. But this isn't always reliable. Sometimes, depending on the velocity of the cart coming up to the top, It'll have little or no forward momentum, and if it falls down onto the track without any momentum at all, it will just sit there because a power rail is non-directional. It doesn't know if you want to go to the right or if you want to go to the left. So if your cart doesn't have any directional momentum, it won't go either, and it will just sit there. So what I prefer to do so that I have positive control on exactly what it is the cart is going to do I build an incline. Let me see. I think I can put it right there. It's in line. And I want my incline to start underneath the track. So let's build it up a few. Maybe like that. Of rail right there, a little piece of power rail. Now notice the drop off is out here, but I actually started the incline underneath, back up underneath the track here, because what I want is, let me get out of that, what I want is the inclined part of the track to be underneath the precipice. If I bring it too far forward and the cart lands on that flat piece of track here on top, it's just going to sit there. I want to make sure it hits the incline every time. So let's jump in it and see if we can do that. Now here again, you can use redstone rail. I don't recommend it because it's not always reliable. An incline is always reliable. It gives you the exact same results every single time, which is my preference. There we are, and then we'll hit the dead redstone to stop the cart. Tell you what, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to power this up. I'm going to add some extra track and we're going to complete the loop because as I've mentioned many times, my philosophy of railroad tracks in Minecraft is they need to run continuously and without interference from the operator. So let's go ahead and complete the loop here. Oh, all right. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put a hopper car on here, give it a bump, and then this way we can watch its behavior in the loop. Here it comes up the track, it drops, 
onto the incline, takes it down to the power rail, power rail pushes it back around the track, and it, show, it should be able to continue indefinitely around this track without any input from me, which is exactly what it's doing now. So this way, even if it has no forward momentum coming off the top, oh, well, so much for my completely independent part. It, um, boom, boom, okay. It didn't make it all the way up the rail there that time. Uh, let me go ahead and give it a push. Evidently, maybe, here, tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna give it some extra momentum, there we go. So evidently it was a little weak coming around. Maybe I could have moved that. Now that we have extra power rails on it, that'll give it plenty of power to go around. And this is often the way you have to adjust your track to make sure that it works successful every single time. You notice with that extra power how when it comes off the top here, it's got quite a bit of forward momentum and lands almost at the bottom of that ramp. Got just a little bit of inline left. Uh, if this, if I was going to add this on my permanent railroad, I would extend my ramp outward one more block, so that it wasn't quite so close to to the very edge there. All right, we're going to let it go around one more time, and then I'm going to show you one more benefit for using a an incline at the bottom to catch your cart rather than a, a redstone torch. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, redstone power rail. What we're going to do is by using an incline, you're not relying upon, you're not relying upon uh, the momentum of the cart. And instead, you can choose the direction that it goes when it comes off. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to back up we're going to back up our cart so that it actually goes the opposite direction when it comes off the incline. Let's see if our momentum takes it out. I'm going to go up there just a little bit more. That should be able to do it. We might have to tweak this. All right, that should. That should give us enough momentum to get it back. Let's put our hopper cart here. Give it a nudge. Uh, was that not enough of a nudge? Yes, it was. There it goes. Now notice, now using the incline, by reversing the incline, we can now force the cart to go in the opposite direction after it falls. And this is what I call a falling leaf feature because it's going to the left when it goes up the incline. And then it's falling to the right when it comes down at the bottom of the incline. So sort of like a leaf falling off a tree, it wanders to the left, it wanders to the right as it makes its way down to the ground. Let's show, I'm going to show you here before we uh, finish this episode, I've employed the falling leaf feature in my uh, major railroad, the one that I've that I work on when I'm looking for a little bit of fun in the afternoon and a little way to explore my creativity. So here we go. I'm gonna put a hopper cart here, and we're gonna watch it. There it is. It falls. Because I put a little bit of redstone there give it some momentum to get it back to the next rail. It just goes back and forth. Now notice on this last one, it goes up this incline, but it doesn't make it to the top. So it rolls back and then, whoa, it didn't make it. Okay, it'll make it on the next journey. There, and a little bit higher. We're gonna come back down. There it goes. And that launches it back into the mine tunnel, which is where the rest of the railroad goes back here up underneath the ground. So for the last thing on this episode, let's go ahead and ride the falling leaf. So I'm gonna put my hopper car here. Hop, whoop, wrong car. Do that, put my hopper car here, hump in, hit the W key, and we're off. I believe uh, we actually rode the falling leaf on episode one. 
at the very beginning of episode one while I was talking, I was just riding around on the railroad, and I believe this was a section of railroad that we rode on. Now, see, we, we won't make it all the way to the top here. So we'll turn around and come back. And there you have it. Well, thank you for joining me for yet another episode of my Minecraft tutorials. And I look forward to talking to you all again on the next episode. Have a good day.